Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping into one of the strongest builds when it comes to 1VX. You guys have already seen the solo build, that was the bow and the rapier, definitely one of those builds that I love using. But when you need mobility, you need AoE damage, you need this 1VX build, I'm going to walk you through what I use personally in this 1VX kind of new world atmosphere. So thank you guys again for tuning in, let's jump straight into it. Alright guys, so as we look at the abilities, you can see that right now I have the Rapier and Fire Staff maxed out, so I'll be able to show you exactly what I use. I do want to show you some gameplay at the end of the video as well, so make sure to stay tuned for that. However, if we take a look at the Rapier right now, you can see that we have two perks on the Blood side, which is just refreshing strikes, reducing all cooldowns by 1% on hit, and we also have the deal 10% more damage when your target has greater than 50% health. Both of those are going to be very, very solid options on the Blood side. That's all I'm going to take on the Blood side. Then we take everything on the repost side this is basically going to make your repost so much stronger you can see the first one if repost is triggered successfully all your attacks become in uninterruptible for three seconds by the way they spelled attacks wrong they have a lot of misspellings by the way in the skills tree just kind of interesting to see but we also have the priority so reduce the cooldown of other rapier uh, rapier abilities by 20 percent when landing a repost stun and then we also have the increase the stun from repose to two seconds. This is going to be huge because this is going to allow you to get behind your opponent and get a heavy backstab on their back, going to do insane, insane damage. We also have passives that we're going to look into. So that's Desperation. To deal really 10% more damage when your stamina is below 40%. We also have Red Curtains, so critical strikes reduce all cooldowns by 5%. And then we have Controlled Breathing, plus 3%, or not 3%, but plus 3 stamina on any hit. So it's going to allow you to dodge a lot more as well. Another cool thing to really go into is the evade side of things. So perform a small reliable sidestep in your current movement direction that cancels any current activity and provides a momentarily invulnerability. You can see that breathe in, gain 20 stamina immediately on use. You can see that there's a lot of options with this. So we're going to continue down this. We're going to take Allegro, which gains 20% movement speed for three seconds on use. By the way, this one's pretty useless because when you use your evade you're actually going to kind of come to a standstill and then you have to remove again. So unfortunately they kind of made Allegro fairly useless but you do need do need to actually grab it to continue on to uh you know and every everybody comes off or comes after me when i say this wrong adigo or adig adigo adigo you guys can mess me up in the comments on this one but evading four basically gains 15 percent increased damage on your next slide attack and ends on hit or after one second so that's absolutely huge a lot of increased damage going to be very very good for pve and obviously pvp then we have Crescendo. So Crescendo is going to be another great one to take because individual successful light attacks reduce the cooldown of this ability by 30% each. So that's an insane cooldown reduction if you guys can make all of this work together and stay on top of your target. We also have Flesh. Obviously, if you guys are leveling up right now, I would prefer to get Flesh maxed out before even going into any passives at all. Flesh is going to be huge because you're going to have that really, you know, distance that you're able to grab with killing an enemy or, you know, killing with this ability in general gives you that 80% cooldown. So let's say you're trying to catch on to somebody. You can dash through a turkey. You could dash through a rabbit or something to try to get away or try to get to somebody. It'll give you a refresh and you can re-dash again. We also have the backside so after performing a flesh your next critical strike attack will have its damage increase by 15 percent this lasts for five seconds so this is absolutely huge you can actually left click at the end of your flesh and uh, perform a light attack so you can see that here interruption pressing light attack anytime during the flesh will stop and perform a static continuation attack dealing 115 percent damage so now that you guys kind of saw the rapier or the rapier, uh, you know, abilities, I want to talk a little bit more about the fire staff because the rapier is kind of obvious in my opinion. I think these are the fastest, the best, the greatest really rapier abilities you can take. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit more about the fire staff because if we go into the fire staff, there's going to be some things that you definitely need. That's going to be the pillar of fire. This is for AOE damage. So the 1VX specifically is going to be needed. It's very, very hard to hit on your enemies because they can usually see it coming as you raise your fire staff in the air. They can obviously start dodging. Uh, but if you do hit, you know, a couple people, you get a ton of mana back if you take the Arson's Advantage. And you also get that first strike. So Pillar of Fire deals 40% more damage to foes at full health. So if they're running straight at you and you're able to hit three or four of them with a 40% damage buff, you're going to do a lot of damage. So just keep that in mind. We want to jump through some of the passives real quick and we'll jump into the Fireball as well. So we have Spell Slinger. This is going to actually gain... 15% chance to critical strike on all of your abilities. We have Prophet of a Fire God. While holding a Fire Staff, your critical strike damage is increased by 20%. Flare, heavy attack 
uh, heavy attacks all together no longer consume mana, which, you know, you can definitely switch this out with Fiery Restoration. I think Fiery Restoration is absolutely huge. However, I don't have enough points to, uh, you know, really go into Fiery Restoration because I used all 20 points. I do want to respect this and possibly take Fiery Restoration because I think this is absolutely huge for 1VX if you can get some heavy attacks down. So if you don't have mana problems, I would definitely switch out Flare. This is just because I've been running PvE content that I have Flare on. But if you have no mana issues, definitely take Fiery Restoration instead. It's going to help you a ton when it comes to continually throwing out spells, burnout, and all of that to really kite and do that 1vx. So I want to take a look at the ultimate really quickly. We have Runes of Helios, which casting a fire spell places a 2 meter rune on the ground, increasing your spell damage by 30% while standing in the rune. This rune actually lasts for 7 seconds and has a 30 second cooldown, so that's going to be a very, very strong ability or ultimate ability there as well. We have Singe. So basically, you when you get a critical strike with the fire staff cause burning, dealing 3% weapon damage each second for 16 seconds, that's going to be a decent amount of weapon damage over or really damage over time that's just going to continue to add on to the massive damage you already do we also have the clear casting so if you haven't taken damage in the last three seconds deal 10 percent more damage so if you're the first one to fire an attack they haven't hit you yet and they're coming towards you you know you're gonna be able to do insane damage that first ability with all of this kind of stacking with the first strike as well jumping into the fireball though you can see that there's obvious reasons to take the fireball it's another aoe ability that's fairly easy to hit as you can obviously throw it just straight on the ground if you want. And it actually has a burning field that persists for 9 seconds with Scorched Earth. Then we have the catch. So direct hits with the fireball give you 10% of your max mana and reduces your fire staff's cooldowns by 7%. So this is going to be very, very important as well as the fireball, or sorry, the pillar of fire to hit those abilities to really get your mana back since we are going to, like I said, hopefully take flare off and put in fiery restoration. As we jump to the other side, Pyromania is going to be a fairly strong one because while holding a fire staff below 50% max health, damage is increased by 20%. So you're going to do really a ton of damage at full health, and you're going to do a ton of damage below 50%. So either way, you've got that damage buff. We're also going to take Let It Burn. Whenever Burn deals damage, gain 10% Fortify for 2 seconds, and then Kindle. So burning actually lasts 20% longer, which is huge when obviously all of this does burn damage. We also have the Burnout. So this is going to be your ability to actually get away or go in and finish that kill because you actually go fairly fairly far distance and by the way fire staff cooldowns are reduced by five percent for each foe hit by burnout so this could be absolutely huge for the 1vx as well because all of these abilities give you kind of cooldown reduction in a way that uh, really could help you 1vx like i said very very easily we also have heated up so burnout basically goes 50 percent farther a definite take on the list of abilities for fire staff i do want to jump through now the really attributes that you guys should be sticking with so my attributes, ignore them completely. This is not the attributes you should be going. I want to talk to you about the attributes, though, because intelligence is going to be important, obviously, with the Fire Staff Rapier. We're going to go full intelligence and full constitution on this build. We're going to stick with 50-50. So once you get 50 constitution, 50 intelligence. From there, I would like to go to 150 intelligence, 100 constitution. Uh, getting that 150 intelligence first and then moving the constitution to 100. Once you have 100 constitution and 150 intelligence, from there, I would strictly go full intelligence. The one reason I like 100 intelligence, or sorry, 100 constitution typically is because it increases your max health by 10% of your physical armor, which you need health to obviously survive some of these fights. And I typically like going medium armor as well, which also helps with that. So in the long run, I would like to get 300 intelligence, 100 uh, constitution. And if you can continue to throw more into constitution later on, definitely do so. But I want to jump into some of the medium armor so 22.9 is what i would typically go that's going to be the medium armor that uh, allows you to really stay at the medium weight level but uh, like i said you're maxing out on your physical and elemental resistances so that's going to be 22.9 so that's going to be a heavy head heavy chest and then you can go medium light medium on the boots pants and gloves and then if you want to go fully light you definitely can just stay like i said at the very very bottom i believe that's 12.9 on the light armor and that's going to be light everything with a heavy chest if you want to stay light you can 1vx with that it's just going to be a little bit more taxing if you you know mess up because you're going to die very very quickly to muskets and any ranged attacks that can hit you when you're hitting them i do want to jump into a couple more things though you know fire staff rapier is definitely a build that's going to require a gem in your rapier so if we take a look at the rapier right now that I'm running, it's going to be a dexterity intelligence rapier. So it's not too bad. You know, the dexterity is not going to help with the fire staff, but at least it's got that intelligence as well. And that dexterity will obviously help with the rapier. 
So 40% of damage is converted to arcane, and damage scales off base weapon stat or intelligence, whatever is higher. So also, we have on critical gain 15% in power for 5 seconds, so that's going to be two solid options with the rapier. The cool thing, though, with this rapier is that you're going to have a socket, so what you're going to always want in a fire staff rapier build is a socket on your rapier at the very least, and you're always going to want to take some kind of uh, you know, scaling with intelligence, which typically I like to take the sapphire. Sapphires are going to be very, very strong because they're going to help you with corrupted. They're going to help you with a bunch of different monster types that I prefer. And so I always typically, like I said, take the sapphire gem in my rapier. When I go the fire staff, if we do have a, you can see that this is a nice flame wakes fire staff from, um, this is actually from the dynasty shipyard, a 55 dungeon, but there is no socket. So it's amazing. Just no socket. Unfortunately, you know, I'm going to have to just stick with this one because, like I said, it's so, so good besides the socket part. So we're sticking with the Flame Wake. But the thing is, if you have a socket, typically you'll take the Onyx. Onyx is going to increase your damage based on, uh, it's going to be based on if you're, you know, full health, actually. So if, if the target and you are both full health, you're going to, like I said, do insane increased damage to the target, obviously. So it's going to be about that first burst of damage. And I think, you know, if we go into the Pillar of Fire real quickly because this is going to be a big part of what I was kind of combining there. If you go into the Pillar of Fire, you can see that Addison's, or sorry, not Arson's Advantage, we're talking about First Strike. So Pillar of Fire deals 40% more damage to foes at full health. It's going to stack with the First Strike, and you're going to do insane damage right off the bat. So that's going to be really the build regarding the Fire Staff and the Rapier. All right, so now we want to show you guys how it kind of works out. So now I'm in a, like, look, it looks like a 1v3, 1v4 maybe. I think the fourth one comes here in a little bit. I'm just trying to cut, chop some trees, right? Because I'm level 60. I'm not too worried about leveling at this point. Just trying to chop some trees. I got my Lumberjack shirt on. I don't even have 250 intelligence. Um, so I'm just kind of dashing away at this point. I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can actually win this. I don't have great gear on. I'm pretty much, like I said, fully specced into woodcutting. You know, I have increased chance and luck or whatever with the the actual woodcutting shirt. And you can see another player of Covenant coming over here. And this one's a tank, and uh, it looks like he's got a life staff as well. So I have to figure that on later, uh, or figure that out a little bit later on. But uh, this guy messed up. He used his ice totem, or not his ice totem, but his ice uh, form very, very early. And I just three-shot him. I mean, just took him out very, very quickly. Obviously, I'm level 60. He's not, but 880 Fire Magic Mastery is definitely going to be something I was looking for because I was at, I believe, 19 Fire Mastery. So you can see here that we have two more players, and this is going to be impossible to kill. For the most part, the Sword and Shield guy I'm talking about because, like I said, he's running the Sword and Shield and Life Staff. So you're able to see how much damage I did in that 1v2, and now we have another 1v2. Uh, you know, I want to call it a 1v3, but, you know, at the same time, we weren't really attacking all three at once. But there is a lot of Covenant out in these woods, so I was kind of worried about the situation we were in. So at this point, I'm trying to get to the Life Staff user, but you can see how running into a Sword and Shield plus an Ice Gauntlet, I wasn't really about it. So I started backing up just a little bit, trying to make them run and chase me. I use another pillar of fire, end up missing it, unfortunately. Flesh through to try to get to the, the life staff user in the back, the ice gauntlet life staff user, that is. He goes into a, uh, I keep calling it ice totem. He goes into an entombed. Um, so now I know he has no entombed. I'm able to go straight toward him, auto attack him twice, one more auto attack to kill him, get the auto attack, also kill him. So there it is, the 147 fire mastery to finish off and get that fire staff level 20. At this point, I try to heal up a little bit, try to see if I can do this, right? I want to see if I can do this. And I'm looking at the damage I'm doing. You know, I'm doing some decent damage. Then I think about it, and I'm like, this guy's got a life staff, sword, and shield. He's going full con, it feels like. So we're just going to back this off. So at some point, I do give up on this fight just because, you know, you really can't be a sword and shield life staff user. You just, it's an unkillable build. So I just walk my winnings away and uh, take that 1v3 in a way, kind of a 1v2, 1v3. You guys let me know in the comments what you guys think it was. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I'll see you all in the next one.